Hey guys, my name is Mohamed Asher and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, in this video, we'll be learning how to create a uh, Kanban uh, project management tool using uh, Bubble.is. So, um, the purpose again of this video is to help you guys understand the basics of Bubble.is and how to create the application itself. Uh, I've, I've created a, a, like a long series of videos about how to create different kinds of applications, like a directory application, social network applications and a an instant messenger as well using mobile that as in this but and I think personally this is by far the most easiest uh, uh Bubble IS tutorial I've ever made. So uh, this should be a beginner friendly tutorial. So anyway, let's begin with this. So if you don't know what Bubble.is is, go to this website called bubble.is. Um, and then you gotta register for a free account. There's paid plans you'll be learning. So if you wanna like you if you wanna use this for commercial purposes and if you wanna have if, you, if you're gonna have a large user base, you can go to their pricing structure it's on their web page and check out what, what they offer. Uh, it's it's basically a visual programming tool. So if, if in case you just want to launch your business and you don't really have coding skills, but uh, you will need to have uh, some specific set of, you know, uh, just if you, if you can just build up logic, okay, you can create an application using Bubble.is. So I'll just show you guys what it really means. So what I did here is I just designed this stuff. I, I, there's actually no logic behind this. So if you click on the plus button or whatever it is, nothing's going to happen. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what the Kanban application tool itself is, uh, it basically allows you to, uh, it's a project management solution. What it means is it allows you to, um, Add all the tasks that are uh, that are pending in your company, and then uh, it categorizes them according to the the process or their progress. So, for example, with the things that you have to do, what is what, what are the what are the tasks that are in progress and the things that are going to be things that are already being completed. So, as you, uh, you can add your items from here and select your status from here. And if you click on the plus, uh, the items will be added to the corresponding category. And for example, it's in the to-do. If I uh, select this uh, arrow button, it will go to the work in progress. If I select this arrow again, it will go to complete. And if I actually click on this little text here, it will delete. So uh, for those of you guys who have watched my other bubble tutorials, you're not going to find anything uh, really fancy here. It's very simple. I'll, I'll explain to you guys how I did this designing process. It's really, really simple. Okay. So what you have to do is, first of all, uh, create a new bubble application. It can be public or private. Uh, public is in case you want to, you shouldn't be actually deploying that as a, a commercial application because anybody can come and edit uh, public applications, actually. So uh, anyway, so once you create an application for the bubble, I don't want to do that right now and show you guys. It's very simple. Um, Start from a blank page. Don't use any templates whatsoever. Uh, and then uh, use Center by Center. You don't have to use any plugins. Uh, by the way, for those of you guys who want to actually make this account specific to every user, uh, for example, if you want to offer a solution where people can come and register on your website and have their own uh, Kanban boards, then uh, you can by all means integrate that. And uh, for that, you ha you'll have to go ahead and watch my social networking or the, uh, yeah, social networking or the messaging uh, bubble tutorial. But, <coughs> but this is going to focus only on the Kanban section. So first, what you have to do is, uh, I added the background here, which is this color. For those of you guys who want to know exactly uh, the colors that I use, you can pause my video and take a look at it, every styling that I've used here. So uh, everything here is using the font called Droid Zone. So first thing is I dragged and drop a text element and I made it the size as a heading to and I changed the uh, color to white and then um, uh, increased the weight of the font, made it center aligned and then centered it vertically as well. And then the next thing I did is I uh, added three sections. Now you can have as many sections as you want to or you can even allow users to add their own sections. You'll know in a little bit of a while. I mean, you'll know in a while uh, how to add those. Uh, once you've added these three texts, you're gonna you're gonna add something called a repeating group. Now, basically, this is not a shape upon a repeating group. What I did is I simply added something called a repeating group. If you don't know what a repeating group is, basically, it's like a list of uh, of, of, of a, dy a dynamic list which is going to uh, compose uh, the things that the user has or uh, or. Or it's gonna have it's gonna contain the data. Okay. Now, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a repeating group, and I just changed the background to this color here, just to make uh, just to uh, help users understand that this is a different section. This is a different section. This is a different section. 
So what I did is I added three repeating groups, and inside inside these repeating groups, uh, I actually added a shape here. So uh, just to give every oops, so, yeah. So uh, I added a shape here, and upon that, I added a uh, text. Now what this will do is as soon as you add the text, it's gonna add, it's gonna show you. Uh, how it would look on the bottom here and i also had an error mark if you don't know how, how to add this error mark you can actually borrow some icons from fat a flat icon flat icon uh dot com or you can google this icon here it's a standard material icon you you can actually install a plugin called material icons and that's actually the fun part of bubble is that uh even i mean i'm showing you guys how to create a very simple uh uh Canva tool which is already there on the market but why would you want to do that Probably, if you have some interesting ideas, you can uh, stack upon this existing idea and build something even cooler than, uh, or you can just innovate upon the Kanban tools, whatever you want to do. So I had a uh, arrow mark, and I just duplicated stuff. No, pretty much they look the same, but except in the completed, I don't have the arrow mark because there's nothing beyond that point. So you can only delete these things. You can delete the items on either ways. Uh, but yeah, the main, uh, you know, the technical point of this tutorial is actually how to play with the conditions tab, especially how you're going to move these items to different lists. And that is the whole point. Technically, that's what you're going to learn here. And uh, this is where the uh, description of the task is going to be added. And this is a uh, drop down menu here. This is again a shape and with some background there. This is a uh, this is the text thing. I added a placeholder called text description. And this is the thing. And this is the button. Uh, I changed the background a bit so you can check the, the color and everything else if you want to. I added a roundness, so I mean the, uh, yeah, roundness to 100 so it looks like a perfect circle. And I don't know really why this is going to, why this is really glossy. It looks absolutely ugly, uh, but, but I just wanted to make it sort of look a little bit presentable. So uh, with that said, I guess uh, I have explained you guys uh, the uh, the overall interface here. I didn't add any additional pages. I'm just playing out with just one page. But if in case you're uh, trying to do anything like a, uh, if you're going to have sign in and or any authentication, this shouldn't be your first page. And as you know it, uh, you could probably have uh, a sign in and sign up part in the index part and then uh, followed by uh, your list of Kanban boards and then this part so uh, this will contain uh, for those of you who want to know how to like expand upon this tutorial you can go and check out my social network social network uh, how to create a social level with bubble is tutorial uh, that will be explained clearly okay so enough of talking, let's get into it. So I've, all, I've got all my uh, interfaces ready here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start playing out with the data tab here. So the first thing we're going to add here on the data is the item itself. Uh, and then we're going to add a new type here called data. And uh, a couple of things we're going to add here is the description. And the first thing that's going to say, uh, every list item is going to have a description. And that's going to be a text, a single item. And I'm going to create that. And the next thing is the status, which is going to hold, okay, what is the status of the uh, item in the list? So that is also going to be a text, uh, and then save it. Uh, for now, that's pretty much all we need to begin with, so let's get started on. Uh, the first thing you want to do is apologies for the background noise, okay? Uh, Alright, so let's go click on the plus button here, and I'll go ahead and start edit workflow. Where is that? But, <laughs> yeah. So as soon as you click on that, the first thing you want to do is on the action step, uh, go to uh, data things and uh, click on that uh, make changes to a thing. No, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, you got to go ahead and say uh, create a new thing. And the thing that you're going to create is a new item. Okay. And you're going to be saving a couple of fields here. The first thing you want to save is the description and the next thing you want to save is the status. Now remember the status is going to be declared by the user here. Okay, yeah, by the way, uh, on the drop down, you're going to change the uh, status here and then change this toy style to static choices. And then you're going to name, you're going to have as many categories as you want to. In my case, it's only to do, whip, and completed. Well, this, these things are completely case sensitive, so you got to be really careful about uh, the case sensitive, uh, I mean, everything here. So uh, don't use uh, spaces here because you're going to be uh, using this on the conditions tab. So uh, I think spaces will, will, will make
make it slightly difficult or confusing to work with. So I, what you need to do is you need to have all the categories uh, in different lines. So first category is to do, press enter and type in uh, or return and then type in WIP which stands for work in progress for those of you who don't know, completed uh, and uh, whatever categories you want to. So again, let's get back into it. So status and description. So these are the two things that we want to save. So where is the value of description? The value of description is in the uh, input value. Status is also in the drop down status value. So now we're going to save this. Whatever value is going to select. So if, if he's going to select WRP uh, and it's, um, whatever it is, and then if he's going to like whatever value he's going to click on it, if he clicks on the plus, a new item call, uh, I mean, a new data call item will be select, a uh, data item will be created uh, with these two information. Uh, so, yeah. And then the next thing is now. Okay, you save the data, but now you don't, you can't really see them if you actually preview the application. But if you actually go to the data tab here and then check on the app data, you could see all the data that you're saving from here. So anyways, now let's get ahead and let's go ahead and actually retrieve the data now. And for now, the type of the content should be item. Uh, apply the same for the three repeating groups, okay? Um, and now, so here's the, the, the part which is the important. So on the data source, click on click here and select do a search for and the type should be an item now the first thing you want to select is the uh, add a new constraint and you got to select the status here what I'm doing now uh, click on equal to what I'm doing here is I'm going to display all the items that is added but not all the items but I'm going to display only the items that are category that has the status of to do okay the way I do that is if the status is to do okay only then I mean you gotta display a search for all the items that have the status to do and display that you gotta do the same thing over here uh, on the data source click on do this do a search for I type of the item is item add a new constraint and the status to uh, equal to uh, this is a work in progress so that I say in uh, type in status is equal to work in progress and on the completed do it do the same thing do a search for uh, item add a new constraint status equal to uh, completed make sure this is case exactly as you uh, have given it on the status here because you the drop down uh, things cannot be uh, changed okay so whatever values you give here it's a static choice so anyway so that that's that's about it now you're going to display the whatever is the the description value that is whatever you type here should be displayed here right so you're gonna on the edit me you gotta erase this and click on insert dynamic data current sales items description okay bang that will describe uh, that will have the description of your element do the same thing here then a current sales items description do the same thing here uh insert dynamic data current sales items description okay now let's go ahead and check our application now I guess we're done with it. Let's go to let's go see if we have any problems. Okay, all's good to go. Let's go ahead and type in test description as hello world. And then status is to do plus. Bang. Now, here's the next thing you want to do is uh, in progress. So I'll add that into uh, whip or <laughs> work in progress. You can see there. Okay, now uh, the next thing we want to do is I guess everything's working. Let's put that plus again now. Okay, wait. Completed. It didn't work. Work. Okay, wait. Okay, looks like. Oh, it's completed. By the way, I did forget thing here. It's not complete. It's completed. Okay, I guess that's what I do here. Okay. Look. Now, if you preview the application, now it should work. Okay, so yeah, that's where we got it now. Now the next thing we want to do is, uh, so if I want to delete the item, oh, I want to actually um, say something like on the conditions tab, uh, you want to describe another addition when the uh, the current sales items uh, description um, is is clicked, right? So you want to say uh, is 
no, 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 Start every workflow. Actually, this might not be the best UX because uh, you can delete the current current cell side. So what we're doing, what I'm doing is on the data data things, delete the thing. Whatever is the current cell in the repeating group should be deleted. So that's what we're doing here. Do the same thing here. Start every workflow. When the current the label or the text is clicked, you want to delete the item. So um, yeah, the next thing you want to do is you want to understand this error here. So if he's on a to do. If I click on this arrow, what should happen? It should go to the work in progress. Okay, so if I want to uh, go to the start a workflow, when the uh, forward button uh, on the to do is click, you want to go to data here and select on uh, make changes to a thing. You're, going, you're only going to make changes to the current cell's item here, whatever is the item in the list. So uh, the thing, the only thing that you want to change is not the description, but the status. Now the status, once, once it has been clicked, it's now on the work in progress. So uh, yeah, that's it. You gotta do the same thing here. And when this arrow is clicked on, now it's already on work in progress. Now it has to go to complete it. So start a workflow. So, uh, click here to add action on the navigation. You gotta select on the data. Sorry, uh, on the data the data things. You gotta select uh, make changes to a thing. You gotta make changes to the carousel item. The only thing you wanna change is the status, and that's now going to be completed, right? That's it. Now, if we actually check our whole thing out, uh, I think our whole application is complete. So, uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and push this here. As you can see, I can push all of them to complete. If you want to delete them, I click, click on it, everything's gone. <laughs> so, voila, that's it. We do, uh, we've created our very first uh, Kanban tool. So that's it guys, uh, that's the basic of Bubble and how to create a Kanban application. Now the most important part here is that, uh, most important thing to understand here is that this, this kind of tool is obviously really popular and a lot of people are doing this. So you can actually uh, start you know, adding plugins, create your own interface and just try to innovate upon this existing concept or idea. Um, I've been trying to do this for freelancers and a lot of, uh, for freelancers especially. I mean, if you guys have a better solution, better ideas, please be sure to share your ideas with me on on, on, your, on my YouTube. So with that said, uh, I shall see you guys in another video soon. Very soon. Thank you guys for watching.